In popular media, we often see dinosaurs fighting each other. Be it T Rex against Spinosaurus in Jurassic Park 3, or Chiganodosaurus against Pherisinosaurus in Jurassic World Dominion. However, these depictions are often wrong for a number of reasons. If you are wondering which dinosaurs really fought each other, then this video is for you. The rules are simple. Adult dinosaurs from the same time and habitat in a 1 vs 1 fight in open landscape. So now let's jump back in time and witness some of the most epic fights that ever happened. Dilophosaurus was one of the earliest mid-sized theropods to appear in the lower Jurassic and probably a forerunner in North America. The two crested lizard lived from 199.3 to 183.7 million years ago in the Cayenta Formation in the Cinnamurian and Plainsback Camp periods of the lower Jurassic. Dilophosaurus reached a length of 7 meters or 23 feet and a weight of 400 kilograms or 880 pounds and had two crests on its head. The teeth were long, curved, thin and laterally compressed, potentially allowing for devastating bites. Its bite force is still debated, although a strong bite force seems quite possible according to a 2021 article by Brown and Rowe. Furthermore, this predator possessed one large hand claw and several large foot claws. The Lophosaurus's opponent is the Prosauropod Cerosaurus. With a length of 4 meters or 13 feet and a weight of only 200 kilograms or 440 pounds, it is hard to imagine that these sauropodomorphs would one day evolve into supersized sauropods. Cerosaurus lived from 199.3 to 182.7 million years ago in the Cayenta Formation, also in the Cinnamurian and Plainsbachian periods. It is still debated whether Cerosaurus is a pure herbivore or rather an omnivore. Cerosaurus already resembles sauropods in a number of aspects, including its elongated neck and robust build. Cerosaurus was bipedal, with front legs that were much shorter than the hind legs and equipped with powerful grasping hands. Cerosaurus was medium sized for a basal sauropodomorph. But how would a fight between these two dinosaurs end? Dilophosaurus wins in weight, height and above all in terms of hunting equipment. Cerosaurus on the other hand could probably not crush a Dilophosaurus under its weight, as it is way too light for that. What's more, Cerosaurus had a long neck which made it vulnerable. Cerosaurus would probably only have a chance if it was a juvenile Dilophosaurus. So 90% go to Dilophosaurus. Allosaurus, the most common predator of the Upper Jurassic in North America. The type species Allosaurus fragilis lived in the Morrison Formation of North America and the Kimmeridgian and Typhonian of the Late Jurassic. Allosaurus fragilis could reach up to 9.7 meters or 32 feet in its upper length estimate and weighed a maximum of 2.7 metric tons. Allosaurus is equipped with long hand claws and a jaw full of razor sharp teeth. It was an active hunter that operated from ambushes. Allosaurus' iconic counterpart is the Stegosaurus. This fiery offeron is one of the most popular and recognizable dinosaurs in general. It also inhabited the Morrison Formation, the Kimmeridgian and Typhonian of the late Jurassic. Stegosaurus stanops is the type species of its genus, while S. ungulatus seems to be the bulkiest. There is also a third species called Stegosaurus sulcatus. Stegosaurus possessed osteoderms in the form of bony cord scales along its body. Yet its best weapon was a much smaller accessory, the tail spikes. These formidable spikes can easily damage attacking predators. Stegosaurus would normally peacefully graze around the low vegetation of the Morrison Formation. So now it is Stegosaurus stanops vs Allosaurus fragilis. Stegosaurus stanops comes in with a length of 6.5 meters or 21.3 feet and has the slight weight advantage with 3.5 metric tons. Allosaurus on the other hand is faster, more agile and has its sharp teeth and hand claws as its main weapons. Allosaurus also has the brains on its side. 
However, the Stegosaurus is a massive animal and won't get knocked over by the Allosaurus, instead swinging its tail spikes in the direction of the attacker. One knock of the tail spikes could mean brutal damage for the Allosaurus. While Stegosaurus only has two weak points, the neck and the underbelly. The Stegosaurus stand-ups takes this one, even with barely a metric ton more in mass. 75% go to the Stegosaurus. Giganotosaurus, the infamous predator from Patagonia's Candelaros formation, type member and namesake of the Giganotosaurines and potentially biggest theropod ever. It lived in the Cenomanian of the Cretaceous 99.6 to 96.1 million years ago. Giganotosaurus is a behemoth, weighing about 8.4 metric tons and reaching up to 13 meters of 42.6 feet in length. The specimen MUCPV95 is said to be even larger, measuring a whopping 10.4 metric tons at its upper estimate, competing in size with the T-Rex specimen commonly known as Copium rex. Giganotosaurians are known for their large skulls, sharp shark-like teeth and neural spines. Giant Cacrodontosaurs seem to have adapted to hunting large prey, as seen in the environments of Mapiosaurus and Acrocanthosaurus for example. Giganotosaurus' hands could have been quite useful as well, as they were decent in hand size to body size ratio among theropods and house sharp claws. Giganotosaurus and Titan most certainly also possessed neural spines on their tail vertebrae. Titanosaurus is what we most closely associate with Giganotosaurine prey items. Andysaurus was a basal member of this clade. Although on the smaller side for sauropods, Andysaurus still managed to grow up to 18 meters or 59 feet in length and weighing 7 metric tons. Portrayals of Andysaurus often show an animal the height of 6 meters or 19.6 feet allowing it to graze high vegetation. Andysaurus is also home to the Candelaros formation of Patagonia from 99.6 to 97 million years ago. Its name Andysaurus originates from the Andes Mountains in South America since the fossils were found there. Unfortunately, this titanosaur is not that well known as there is only one partial skeleton consisting of a series of four vertebrae from the lower back as well as 27 tail vertebrae. And so now the question arises, can a Giganotosaurus with 8.4 metric tons that would normally hunt smaller sauropods beat a similar sized titanosaur? Let's find out. Giganotosaurus got the slight size advantage and also has the speed on his side. His weaponry also goes for him, as his teeth are perfect for slicing through flesh. Antisaurus got the height advantage and also has a long tail about the half of its body length. That tail could potentially hurt the massive Giganotosaurus, but the hunter won't be shaked off easily. Giganotosaurus, being about 4 meters or 13 feet tall, more than twice the height of the average man, could even attack the Andysaurus on its neck or anywhere else it seeks fit. With its teeth it sets one bite after the other and the Andysaurus slowly, but steadily, goes to sleep. 65% goes to the Giganotosaurus. If the MUCP V95 fought the sauropod, considering its maximum estimate, the odds would have shifted even further to the side of the Giganotosaurus. The Neo Venator resided on the Isle of Wight in southern England. It was found in the Wessex Formation and dated between 130 and 125 million years ago. Neo Venator belonged to the Cacarodontosaurian subgroup New Venatoridae, named after itself. New Venatoridae or the New Hunters are indeed a subgroup of Cacarodontosaurians, but not a subgroup of Cacarodontosaurids, meaning they are not directly related to the Cacarodontosaurids. They are more of a sister group of the Cacarodontosaurids. However, it could be that New Venator is a Cacarodontosaurid after all, if we take a look at Fernando Novas's cladogram from 2013. Apart from its still difficult classification, this animal is also known for Allosaurus-like traits, as it possessed a relatively gracile build with a weight of only 1 metric ton for a 7 meter or 23 feet long new venator. However, some fossil material indicates that new venator could grow up to even 10 meters of 32.8 feet in length. 
The new Venator also seems to have strong and useful arms with large claws. Like Carcharodontosaurus, new Venator also ironically seemed to have semi-aquatic counterparts in the form of Baryonyx, Ceratosuchops and Reparovenator. New Venator's realm also housed another famous dinosaur, the Mentalisaurus. This dinosaur is famous for having been misclassified as Iguanodon in the past. Mentalisaurus was named after geologist and paleontologist Gideon Mantel. It lived from 130 to 120 million years ago. Remains are known from England, Spain, Belgium and Germany. Mentalisaurus was a lightly constructed hadrosauroid. Its weight is estimated at 750 kilograms or 1650 pounds. Its forelimbs were proportionally shorter than those of Iguanodon bernisartensis. In Mentalisaurus, the forelimbs were about 50% of the length of the hind limbs, while Iguanodon bernisartensis's forelimbs make 70% of the length of the hind limbs. Due to the shorter forelimbs and the overall shortness of its body, Gregory S. Paul proposed that Mentalisaurus was primarily bipedal, only going on all fours when standing still or moving slowly. Additionally, Mentalisaurus possessed a thumb spike, which it will probably use for foraging food on a normal day. However, this was not a normal day, as Mentalisaurus now stands face to face with the apex predator of the region, the New Venator. Although from the Isle of Wight, New Venator wasn't a dinosaur of the defined English way. The Mentalisaurus stands on two legs, its thumb spikes ready at any time. The New Venator seems quite agile as he dodges the thumb spikes. He tries to grab and hold Mentalisaurus with its claws, while biting it on the back, but the Ornithopod gets away and tries to escape. The New Venator goes in again, this time too close. Mentalisaurus catches the new Venator and pierces its thumb spike into Neo's body. New Venator, who learned not to multitask, goes in again, this time for the neck. Its shark teeth and sliding jaws do the rest. 75% goes to the new Venator, as it outsizes our Mentalisaurus and got a better arsenal of weapons. Don't mess with this gangster. Lillian Sternus was a basal neotheropod from the Coelophysoidea class, meaning it was closely related to Coelophysis. Fossils were found in the Trossing Information in Germany. Compared to the small speed demon Coelophysis, however, Lillian Sternus was a giant. With a length of just over 5 meters or 16.4 feet and an upper weight estimate of 200 kilograms or 440 pounds, it was an absolute forerunner of the early pheropods. Lillian Sternus lived in the Triassic, a time when the dinosaurs were not yet in charge. It was only towards the end of the Triassic that the tide turned in favor of the dinosaurs. Lillian Sternus was one of the few Triassic predatory dinosaurs to break the 100 kg or 220 pound mark. In 1988, Gregory Paul noted that Lillian Sternus used its row of teeth to incapacitate prosauropods and its speed to catch nimble on a on the other hand, we have what is probably one of the phases of the Triassic, the well-known Plateosaurus, an early sauropodomorph that also appears as an OG in the history of dinosaur research. First found in 1834 and described in 1837, even before the word Dinosauria was first printed in 1842, Plateosaurus contributed greatly to the paleontologic revolution in the 19th century and symbolizes the rise of the dinosaurs like no other. But what is the power behind this early giant? P. trossingensis, P. longiceps and P. gracilis are the three known species of this genus. But what is the power behind this early giant? The type species Plateosaurus trossingensis probably reached a length of anywhere from 4.8 to 10 meters, of 15.7 to 32.8 feet and a weight of 600 kilograms to 4 metric tons, or 1320 pounds to 8800 pounds, while Plateosaurus gracilis was only 4 to 5 meters of 13.1 to 16.4 feet in length and therefore probably at the lower end of the general weight range for Plateosaurus. Plateosaurus gracilis is also known from the trusting information. Plateosaurus was not only bipedal but also quadrupedal. The bipedal stance and its short muscular arms would probably help it reach and grab food, while quadrupedalism was used when Plateosaurus was on the move. 
but what would a fight between the two look like? It's 200 kg of 440 pound heavy Lillian Sterners Lillian Sterny against a 600 kg a 1320 pounds heavy Plateosaurus Gracilis to make things more fair. In this fight Lillian Sterners has the advantage in speed and could probably run circles around Plateosaurus and seriously injure it with its teeth. Plateosaurus had a massive mass advantage and also a slight height advantage. Plateosaurus also had strong arms, though its best weapon is its mass. However, it is debatable if Plateosaurus is heavy enough to completely crush Lillian Sternus. Still, Plateosaurus' strong arms and mass allow him to come out on top here with ease. 70% go to Plateosaurus. That's it for 10 dinosaurs that really could have fought. If you would like to see a part 2, let me know by leaving a like and a comment. You can also subscribe and activate the bell to never miss anything in the future. If you want to get to know me more, check out the Instagram and Twitter account. Links are down in the description. And with that, I wish you a splendid day or evening. Goodbye.